morning and welcome to Detroit Unity Temple where the opportunities and challenges of living meet the awesome and wonderful power of God. Truly we know that this is the day that the Lord has made and we want to say thank you for joining us on this day, the first Sunday in September. We welcome you to our spiritual community because this is a fabulous and wonderful Sunday. And we would like to begin our Sunday off with just the beginning of the reading of today's Daily Word. My name is Pastor Gregory Geis, and I want to extend to you just a magnificent blessing for this Sunday. And right now, I would like to invite to you our very own, the Reverend David Stubbs, who's going to come to you and bring to you the reading of that wonderful book we call The Daily Word. Right now, our very own, the Reverend David Stubbs. Good morning, Detroit Unity. Our word today is world peace. And our affirmation says, I imagine a world transformed by peace and love. World peace begins within my mind and heart. Closing my eyes, I breathe deeply and envision every person bringing forth the love and peace of God. I see all the world's people surrounded by a healing light that transforms strife, anger, and division into reconciliation, peace, and unity. As I own this vision, I see the entire world aglow with radiance. Harmony and cooperation heal the world's wounds and encourage love to flow in each person's heart. I carry this vision throughout my day. Divine love expressing as me sees oneness regardless of apparent differences. Divine wisdom and understanding illumine my thoughts, inspire my words, and guide me to act in ways that bring peace to the world. Our scripture, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Matthew 5 and 9. What a wonderful daily word. I love it. How appropriate today's word. World peace. And then the affirmation. I imagine a world transformed by peace and love. Just take that thought in for just a second. I imagine a world transformed by peace and love. Now let us affirm our congregational mission statement. Together, our mission and goal is to prayerfully demonstrate the teachings of Jesus Christ through the study and practice of truth principles. Amen. And now let us affirm our vision statement for the Living Temple. We, the spiritual community of Detroit Unity, joyously carry out the vision of renewal and prosperity for ourselves, our spiritual home, and our world. That is so true, and we just take it in. We have something at Unity we call Food for thought. Prayer is the most highly accelerated mind action known. It sets up mental action until man consciousness synchronized with Christ's mind. And that's a quote from Charles Fillmore. And I'm, I'm going to say it again. 
Prayer is the most highly accelerated mind action known. It sets up mental action until man's consciousness synchronized with Christ's mind. That is truly so magnificent and wonderful, but it's true. If this is your first time joining Detroit Unity, we welcome you and encourage everyone to visit the temple, to be a part of our live and in-person service when the global health concern is clear. And we look forward to that, and I just want to share with you, it won't be long, and we're working towards seeing that become a reality. So right now, let us join together with today's hymn that will be led by Gwen and Charles Scales. So I'd like to give that to you right now, our very own Gwen and Charles Scales. Let there be less of me, 
Let there be more peace Less of the human More of the divine Less of the human More of the divine Less of the human More of the divine What a wonderful hymn for all of us. It is so appropriate, divine order. And that leads us into this next part. Thank you, Gwen and Charles, for that wonderful song, Divine Order. But this is that moment when we take time to acknowledge the people and things in our lives that we are grateful for. I love this part of our service. It's when we can look at our neighbor or that person sitting next to us and say that we're grateful for them. On this Sunday, we need to take time to let them know, I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for my family. I'm grateful for all the things taking place in the city of Detroit. I'm grateful for the fact that right now we have a chance to make a difference in our community. It is so good, it's so blessed to know that right now, as we go forward in this community, there are people who are trying to make a difference in our society. So make sure you give someone a thought to allow them to know that you are grateful for them. Call them up, reach out to them and give them a spiritual thought. You know, there are so many people right now who would love to know that you're thinking about them. Call them, tell them, send them a text, send them an email. Sometimes that person who may not know it, but we're grateful for them. I'm grateful for those essential workers I'm grateful for that man or that woman who just are doing their job to make sure that we're safe. I'm grateful for you, for your love of Detroit Unity Temple. You know, that's what makes this such a blessing today. So right now, I'm just sending you my love and my vibrational energy. And that's how we keep things in order, as it says, divine order. I love you, I bless you, and I know that God is with you right now. So at this particular time, I'm grateful for this next person who makes us a very special program, a special spiritual community. So I'd like to bring her up to you right now, our very own Miss Betsy Harris. Thank you, Reverend. Good morning, my Detroit Unity family. Let us affirm our statement of truth together, please. There is only one presence and one power active in my life and in the universe. God, the good, omnipotent. Now, let us say our prosperity thought and I will read it to you and this really hit home for me with what I am doing now. And it reads, my dream will flourish. My plans will succeed. My destiny will be assured and the desires of my heart will be granted. Whoo, that's powerful. Let me just say that, read that again. And this time I'm reading it for me. Um, and you all read it with me. My dream will flourish. My plans will succeed. My destiny will be assured and the desires of my heart will be granted. Thank you, God. Now let us prepare for meditation by tuning out all worldly distractions. Everything that may be going on in your home, become still and comfortable as we prepare for meditation by singing the Lord's Prayer. Oh. 
our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name Kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our day. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and leave us not in temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power I now ask that you take a moment right where you are and allow yourself to get centered, to focus your breathing on the only thing there is, and that is the love of God. So in and out at your own pace the love, the presence of God. Let us take a moment right now to focus our attention on the power of this month, order. Because the word tells us that all things, all things should be done decently and in order. We begin our work our work to get everything in our lives in order, our closets, our workspaces, our finances, and yes, even our relationships. We link our mind to God mind and allow him to order our steps. We then see it as already done and watch how it unfolds. How amazing to know that God would place us in the right place at the right time. Let us take a moment to focus our attention on that, that God will place us in the right place at the right time. And because we know that there is no greater order than God's divine order, we allow ourselves to relax with illumined minds and hope-filled hearts and watch how things unfold. So it is, and it is so. Amen.
This is the song that we're about to do. It's a wonderful song in preparation for this wonderful lesson that you're going to hear today about prayer from Reverend Geis. And what a lovely place to pray, but no other place I can think of is in a garden. This is my time. The meditation was a blessing. The song by Gwen and Charles was truly 
a blessing indeed. My name is Pastor Gregory Geis. On this very first Sunday in September, you know this is a year that moves very fast, and we are at a very wonderful point. Before I get started, I just want to take this time just to gather my focus and get centered. So please allow me this moment. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Lord, show me thy ways, O Lord, and teach me thy path. Allow me to be your vessel today. Allow me simply to be guided by your, your divine presence. For truly I know this is the moment that you can allow me to be your vessel. And I open myself up to you to be that instrument as we go forward at this very moment. And I want to say thank you, God, to be able to do that right now, right here. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Thank you, God, and so it is. Amen. I want to take this time and I want to begin by sharing with you that my talk title is The Forgotten Art of Prayer. And it's a chapter that's going to come from Eric Butterworth's book, Discover the Power Within You. We taught this class this summer, and as I was reflecting on it, it was so very powerful. And during the class, I told it to some of the students, it was chapter nine. If you have not read this book, Discover the Power Within You by Eric Butterworth, I encourage you to get it and to read it. It is a magnificent book. But this particular chapter is very important. And I'm gonna get into it, but the first thing I want to do before I start discussing the book and that particular chapter, as you know, every month we talk about the 12 powers. And the power of the month for September is simply called order. And the spiritual power is represented by the disciple James, the son of Atheist. And the coordinating color is olive green. And the physical location is in the navel. And the affirmation is, my life is in balance and in order, and all is well. I'm going to say that again. My life is in balance and all is well. My life is in balance and in order and all is well. You know that means a, a great deal. You know when you think about September you look at so much taking place in the world but it is that point during that time period of the year when there's so much taking place. The colors but it's that time period when the leaves are just at that point where they'll start to fade out, but the weather is still so wonderfully warm, you can feel you have, can have all that you want, but your life has to be in order. This is truly a wonderful time period. But I'm also gonna talk about something that is also very important during this time of the year. During this COVID season, a lot of things are, as you might say, there's a new order taking place because of some things have changed. The second Thursday of every month at Detroit Unity Temple and other Unity facilities around the world, we would be focused on what would be noted as the World Day of Prayer. And we would be set to go forward to celebrate and recognize that particular event and I want us to realize that the World Day of Prayer is coming up very soon. It will be September the 10th. And we'll be honored to have that event taking place at Detroit Unity Temple. 
And I know that all of us will be very much involved in that experience. So I want us to remember that that event will still take place at Unity Village. And I want to encourage you something right now. We would have a box out there in front of the church and I would encourage everyone to fill out their prayer list and send their prayer list to Detroit Unity Temple. Because you may have someone in your family or yourself, I would ask you to fill out that prayer list and mail it, text it, email it to Detroit Unity Temple so we can gather those names and forward them to Detroit Unity Temple. And we will forward those names to Unity Worldwide Ministries. We will forward it to the headquarters where those names will be prayed over for 30 days as they normally would. It stated that united and global affirm affirmative prayer is the purpose of Unity Worldwide Prayer. And for, for 24 hours, a Unity Worldwide Prayer visual is being held at Silent Unity by Unity Prayer Associates and guests. And together to bless thousands of names submitted to the Unity Prayer Ministry. So we invite you to be a part of the annual tradition. So they want us to share our names. So we're inviting you, I'm telling you right now, take time today to fill out your prayer list for those names to Detroit Unity Temple at 17505 2nd Avenue. And we will take those names that you submit to us and forward them directly to Unity Village where they will be prayed over for an additional 30 days. And when we receive them, myself and others will pray over those names that you send to us and we will forward them to Unity Village. We have to continue that tradition. There's an affirmation that's saying, focus on the light. I look with kindness upon fears and worries, for they urge me to harness my great power of faith, our prayerful commitment to you. We want to make sure we continue that tradition and maintain that effort right here and right now. So our goal is not to lose sight of that, but to maintain that effort for World Day of Prayer. That is our quest and that is our goal. Wow, it seemed to come around so fast, but that is what's taking place right now. Now to the lesson. As we talk about the forgotten art of prayer. Brothers and sisters, prayer is one of the most dynamic and most, one of the most powerful principles alive. In the very book written by Eric Butterworth, he states that this is the key, that the key to understanding prayer and the prayer idea that Jesus outlined, he states this, that prayer does not deal with a capricious God, it is a technique for achieving unity with God and his limitless life, substance, and intelligence. Prayer is not something we do to God, to ourselves. It is not a position, but a disposition. It is not flattery, but a sense of oneness. It is not asking, but knowing. It is not words, but feeling. It is not will, but willingness. Jesus said, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. John 4, 24. This is not a definition. Jesus knew that, a, that to define a thing is to limit it. And he was bent on expanding our thought of God as well as giving us a deeper insight. But then he talked about the forgotten art of prayer. And so into ourselves he was giving a guide to direct our thoughts away from a finite form from thinking of God as a superman you see man dilemma is that he was he has become trapped into a religious prepositional theology 
His attitude about God and life and prayer has been a cut and dried and bounded into a neat little package. But you can't cut and dry truth without it ceasing to live as truth. Prayer has become a sacramental ritual that is performed by professionals or it is the experience of reading prayers from a book. This simplifies the process, but it also leaves a sense of frustration and an absence of the real sense of communion. And let me break that down. You see, to know what a prayer is, it can't be about what's in your head. It has to be about what's in your heart. I don't know if you can understand that without recognizing what it means to pray for somebody. Because if you're gonna pray just with words and thoughts coming out of your mouth, you miss the whole idea of what a prayer is all about. If you haven't been there where you had to pray for somebody, a lot of people talk about my prayers were never answered. <laughs> a lot of people don't realize that when you pray, you have to pray from a place that goes deep inside of yourself. There are what is called seven necessary conditions for true prayer, and this comes from the revealing word. It says that number one, prayer should be recognized. The person who's praying should recognize God as Father. That means you have to first begin to recognize God as your Father, our Father who art in heaven. You have to recognize God as that one divine presence within yourself, a oneness. Jesus would always say the Father and I are one. And then the second part, it says that oneness with God should be acknowledged. That means you have to let go of any egoic energy. And then number three, it says, prayer must be made within the secret place. Let me tell you something. And then it says, number four, the door must be closed on all thoughts and interests of the outer world. And number five is so important. The one who prays must believe that he has already received. And number six, the kingdom of God must be desired above all things and sought first. And let me share this. The mind must let go of every unforgiving thoughts. And let's take these for a moment. If any one of those are not connected, if you can't go into a prayer and you don't realize that the Father and I are one, if you can't realize that there's this cosmic spiritual vibrational relationship with you and the Father as a one connected thought together, there's no separation between you and God. You cannot separate the two. It's not me and God. It's not God and I. There's only one presence and one power active in my life. There is no separation between the Father. Jesus understood that aspect. And when you're praying, you see, have you ever prayed to the point where you had to let go? Have you ever been on your knees and you had to let go? I don't know about you. Have you ever had to go to that place when it seemed there was no way out and you just had to close that door on every thought around you? when it seemed like there was no way out of something. When Daniel and Meshach and Bendigo was in that place and they just knew it was only God. 
Have you been in that space where you seem like the only way you could go was to go into that spot within yourself? You see, unless you've been there when there seemed like there was no hope, there was nothing else but God, sometimes when you feel like everything was lost, and the only one that was going to rescue you out of a situation, you knew that it could only be God. And God will come at the right time, in the right moment. The other day, true story, I was driving my car, coming down Woodward, and all of a sudden a car came out of nowhere and it looked like it was going to hit me and all of a sudden for some reason my whole my hands moved my car out of the way it's like something turned the wheel up on the curve I blew out two tires <laughs> and the tires both of them on the passenger side blew the car must have missed me by inches and kept going. And I stood there late at night with two blown tires. And I just stopped for a moment. And I didn't think about the tires. I just said, thank you, God. There wasn't a scratch, nowhere else on the car. And I watched that car flying down the highway. It was a full moon that night and I just felt a sense of gratitude because he would have caught me on the driver's side. I didn't worry about the tires. Thank God for Triple A. I then just simply called them and there was a couple who was at a restaurant who came to make sure I was all right. By the time they got there, I stopped sweating and I knew then that God was in charge. And I said, thank you, Lord. Because then I knew God had took over the will. And I knew that sometimes God is there right on time. I wasn't worried about the tires because I knew I can get to discount tires in the morning. But I was more concerned that my life was all right. You see, that moment, that's how God shows up in your life. That's when I knew somebody must have been praying for me to be all right. So I just simply called home and told somebody I was all right called triple a and the tow truck showed up told me to where the car was supposed to go and i got home the next day it was like it was all in divine order you see when you understand that god is with you it says that prayer is a communion between god and man and that communion take place in the innermost part of man's being. It is the only way to cleanse and perfect the consciousness, thus permanently healing the body. Prayer is the most highly accelerated mind action known. It sets up the mental action until man's consciousness synchronized with the Christ mind. It is the language of spirituality that develops. It makes man master in the realm of creative ideas. Prayer is more than supplication. It is an affirmation of truth that the eternal exists, but which has not yet come into consciousness. This whole world is built around prayer. Prayer is that principle along with meditation that makes what unity is all about. It's our two main pillars, a pillar of prayer 
and a pillar of meditation. Hear me out. This is what we're about. This is what unity is about. Prayer and meditation. So what God provides us with affirmation and denial. Denying the things that don't exist and affirming the power and presence of God in our life. But I want you to understand something. It is necessary to pray believing that we have already received because God is all that we desire. The good always exists in divine mind as ideas and we bring into manifestation through the prayer of faith, affirmation, praising and acknowledgement. <sighs> have you ever been around somebody who have prayed for you and their prayers just lifted you up? Have you ever seen a praying woman who the moment he or she starts to pray and they go to that place deep inside of themselves and it seemed like a glow comes over them? Have you ever seen that person that when they start to pray, it's not like they're shouting words it's like they go inside of themselves. I never forgot that part in the Bible when it talks about Jesus at the Garden of Gethsemane. Sometimes I think about what it must have been like for him. Can you imagine when he was at that rock and he was there and he probably went deep inside of himself. You see, when you're praying, there's a space that so deep. And you say, Father, and you call on that presence and you connect with something so, so, so found a foundation. When he wanted to say, take this cup from me. Then he realized that if it's your will, let it be done. Can you imagine when Jesus called on Lazarus and he had to go within himself? You see, Jesus was not only a mystic. When you understand the oneness with God, you can pour something out of yourself you can connect with the divine. So when he called on Lazarus, he reached deep within himself because he understood what it meant when he says, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. See, when you start that measure, that prayerful measure, you go to that space. Oh my, oh gracious God. You see that forgotten art of prayer is when you connect. As it says, God should be recognized as Father and that oneness with God is acknowledged. But I caution you that you must let go of every, every unforgiving thought. So if you're holding any kind of grudge, if you're holding anything against anyone, let it go. No matter who it is, no matter what they may have done, let it go. When Jesus was on that cross and he says, Father, forgive them. He knew. He knew. We are told to be instant in prayer, to pray with the spirit, to pray in the understanding. We have thought that prayer was something we could go to in any way at any time, but we have to learn to get results. We must pray with a persistence and understand with faith to practice, establish the consciousness where doubt cannot enter. You cannot pray for something and let a single grain of doubt come in. 
You have to believe it. You have to claim it. You have to hold it if you want it. You have to know it. It is yours because God has already declared it and it will be so. Do not lose it. Do not let it go. It is real. And if you believe that, we cannot doubt. We must know it. We must say it. Thank you, God. Whatever we praise, whatever we dare to claim, you see, we must seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. But remember this, when you go there, the ground you will be standing on will be holy ground. Hmm. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. <laughs> and when you say those words, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Eric Butterworth said, discover the power within you so that this forgotten art of prayer will become real. And he said, when ye pray, Know it. Verily I say unto you that you have received a reward. He said, shut thy door and pray to the Father who is in secret. And you will know it. And it will be so. So on this day, my brothers and sisters, I leave you with this thought. That yours is the kingdom of heaven. Pray it, know it, and claim it. And it will be so. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And pray like you're going to claim it. Amen. I truly hope that that talk, the forgotten art of prayer, found you in a wonderful space. Now let us prepare to bless and be blessed through our tithes and offering. Let us take this moment and hold our offering in our hands and let us affirm our prosperity prayer. Divine love in and through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. I want to take this moment to say thank you to everyone who has continued to bless Detroit Unity Temple with their tithes and love offerings. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. There are multiple ways to make a donation. One from our website at www.detroitunity.com Please click the donation button or use the temple drop box located at the Second Avenue entrance of the building. You can also check with your bank to set up a direct pay or you can mail your love offering to Detroit Unity Temple at 17505 Second Avenue, Detroit, Michigan 48203. But I want to take this moment right now just to bless the offering. Dear Holy Spirit, we want to say thank you. Thank you for each and every person who at this very moment have even taken the consideration, who have thought of giving to us and those who have given in the past. We ask that you bless them right now, Father. We know that right now you are blessing someone who's watching our service. Father, we know that your energy, your love, and your spirit is touching this audience, this 
this individual, this family, these, these wonderful souls, Father, because we know that those individuals within the sound of my voice is being blessed by you beyond measure, Father. For we know that you are the inspiration that lifts them up. We know that somebody right now, Father, you are touching them. Somebody you are healing right now. Father, we know in this very moment you are providing them with the prosperity. You are providing them with the richness of your glory, Father. So we say thank you because we know that this service has been a blessing to them, Father. So we are asking that you continuously uplift them, move them, inspire them to their good. And for this, Father, we say thank you, God. Thank you for reaching them and touching them 10 times more than they can ever bless us. So we say thank you in the name of your beloved son, the most high and the gracious Jesus Christ. And for that we say, and so it is, amen. And right now, I feel that somebody been touched. And if you've been touched, reach out and touch somebody as well. But this time, it gives me a wonderful acknowledgement just to say we will be blessed by a fantastic song by our very own Gwen and Charles Scales. Amen. Amen. Charles Skills. We'd like to take this moment to remember for you to invite your friends and family to join us at 10 a.m. on Sunday for our Sunday service broadcast by logging in to www.detroitunity.com and clicking on the Sunday worship service button. We encourage you to remain strong in faith and look to the divine light of God. And right now we would like to invite Ms. Bessie Harris for this week's announcements. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Bessie Harris. Good morning, my family again. The announcements are as follows. Detroit Unity Temple prayer chaplains and board of trustee members will continue making wellness calls throughout the month of September. 
If you have not received a wellness call or other correspondence from the church, please email dutreception at gmail.com. Again, that's dutreception at gmail.com. Please put in the subject line, update my info. If you are grieving the loss of a loved one and you just need someone to talk to, please contact Open Arms Grief and Loss Program. And they can be contacted at area code 313-369-5780. Again, that number is 313-369. 5780. Heart Centered Metaphysics classes is Thursday evenings from 6 to 8 p.m. via Zoom. Email dutreception at gmail.com to register and please in the subject line put Heart Centered. And remember, this is an ongoing class. The caregiver support groups meet the second and fourth Thursday of the month. Their next meeting dates are Thursday, September the 10th and September the 24th. Session one begins 1 to 3 p.m and section two from 6 to 8 p.m. Become a member and learn about senior services, organizations, and resources to help, to help you and your care partner find solutions to challenging issues. Please contact Marilyn Lawson to register by calling area code 313-289 nine six seven two again that's area code three one three two eight nine nine six seven two call our dollar thought line at area code three one three three four five five zero seven zero for a powerful word of encouragement and we need encouragement at a time like this. So that number again is area code 313-345-5070. Guess what? It's time for you to think about becoming a Detroit Unity Temple board member. That's right, a board member. If you are a skilled individual and you just love Detroit Unity, which I know you do. You have a vision for our future and can be committed to serve. We need and we want you as a board member. Additional info will be available in the following weeks to come. Now I need you just to think on it, meditate on it. That's Detroit Unity Temple board member. October birthday and anniversary people, if you would like your special day recognized during service, please send your name and date of birth or marriage to dutreception at gmail.com. Again, that's dutreception at gmail.com. Now this must be received by September the 28th. And in the subject line, please put October party. Thank you. Reverend, that completes my announcements for this Sunday. Thank you, Ms. Harris. You know, that was fantastic and we want to say thank you. And right now, everyone, it is that wonderful time period 
Well, we want to acknowledge, are you ready, Betsy? We want to acknowledge the birthdays and anniversaries for the month of September. So all of you Virgos and Libras, it is that time, and I hope all of you have sent in your birthday. And please watch this screen as you'll see your name or your friend's name or those members of Detroit Unity Temple that will come out right now for this wonderful bit of music and joyful noise. As I say, make a joyful noise. Amen. All right. Happy birthday. happy people out there that we want to thank and I just want to at this time as we bring our service to a close please join us and unity worldwide ministries everywhere as we pray and say the following prayer we know that God is a love that has no end and a power that knows no bounds God's healing power of divine life is restoring, healing, and revitalizing our world in this very moment. We let go of any fears or anxieties, and we affirm that all are safe, healthy, and protected. We bless all those who support us in maintaining vibrant, radiant health. We express divine life in all we think, say, and do. We bless our global family with radiant health, peace of mind, and abundant love. So we say thank you for all those as we take this moment to express our gratitude to our essential workers, our policemen, our firemen. But we also want to take time to acknowledge something else. This past week in the city of Detroit, they had a memorial service for all those who have died from the COVID, and they drove around Belle Isle. What a wonderful tribute to those members and their families as we pay tribute. What a beautiful sight. I also like to take time to say thank you to a man who did us well in our community and across the world as he showed his reflection, a very young man who was stood up and he crossed his arms and he said, Wakanda forever. You know who I'm talking about. He reflected the Black Panther. He was a wonderful tribute. So we bid him farewell in his journey of life because he inspired all of us. And for those of you, I'm not sure if you didn't know him, well, I don't know where you may have been at, but he did us well to serve as a hero for many across this country. We need more heroes like that because he was one that inspired us all. You know, I can't help but say thank you as we bid him farewell on his journey of life, but we know it's life into life. So right now, take time and share his story. Take time and just reflect on his history because he will surely be missed. And we just simply say, he will always be our hero. 
and we want to say thank you for what he brought to us. We also want to take time just to acknowledge right now that Detroit Unity Temple is having a capital campaign. And we need to all remember that because we have to lift up this church. And if you haven't contributed to our capital campaign, make sure. Make sure you tell us more about that to give to our capital campaign right now. You can contact Detroit Unity Temple and, and as you tithe or as you contribute, send a check to our capital campaign right here at Detroit Unity Temple. Write to us, add it in with your tithe because we have to continuously build and sustain and maintain this church. And your blessing will help us maintain this service, this effort that will go forward. So I wanna say thank you God. So remember, every bit helps as we go forward right now. So let us now sing our prayer of protection and our peace song and our benediction. Before that, I wanna say thank you to Gwen and Charles, Billy, John Hudson, Carlos, Effie, Betsy, Melanie, David Stubbs, our board, and everyone that makes an effort to go forward. So we say thank you right now for all that you're doing to make us continue on our effort to be blessed. God bless you. So right now, our prayer of protection and our peace song.
Let this be the moment now With every step I take Let this be my solemn vow To take each moment Living is one 